The Ryan and Rush Show is brought to you by Vision Homes. If you're looking to build a home in North Central West Virginia, visit askvisionhomes.com. Vision Homes, building you a house you're proud to call home. And don't forget to subscribe to The Ryan and Rush Show, but don't take our word for it. Take Coach Neelan's. Hi, this is Coach Don Neelan, and you're watching The Ryan and Rush Show. Please subscribe. <laughs> And we welcome you into another edition of the Ryan and Rush Show, your source for West Virginia sports. Ryan, we haven't done a victory episode in a little bit. Little Victory Monday. Feels good to be out here. Victory Monday might be gross outside, but our hearts are full. West Virginia basketball, of course, gets the 66-60 win over Drexel on Saturday. A lot of concerns going into that game, especially with how the Mountaineers usually play in the second half. Start Down the first half by two points, came back. Ended up scoring eight more points in the second half. Then Drexel gets that 66 to 60 finish. Finish strong. Kerr's coming back. And hey, Ryan, just like that, this team's on the up and up. Yeah, finally, man, a little bit of good momentum. Uh, Wednesday night was a hard night uh, for the Mountaineers against Pitt. Obviously, anytime you lose to your arch rival, it sucks. And this team, their back was against the wall. We actually were down at the half, too. We were down 33 31. And this team, in my opinion, played their best defensive half of basketball of the year um, holding Drexel to 27 points, 34% from the field, uh, three for 15 from downtown. They really put the clamps on Drexel down the stretch. And I think you got to look to one guy and his energy, getting him back in the lineup. But cook cook is a big time defensive uh, difference maker with his ability to switch and guard uh, guard guys that are smaller than him as well as guard the rim. So man, I'm, I'm excited, man. Going forward, it's it's finally a uh, it's finally nice to get a piece back, and we get another piece back next weekend. And with a certain lawsuit on Wednesday, might be getting yeah. more pieces there, but we only know what we know. And right now, we know that a Cooks is back. Got twelve minutes on Saturday, which is good. You know, slowly got to ramp him up. Totally understand that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. When he's been out there, just just that relief knowing just you have extra bodies is is an incredible thing, Ryan. And you could definitely see it. And in the players and in their eyes and how they felt it throughout the game. Obviously, too, it's you, you show after a terrible game on Wednesday, like you were saying, that to come back at this team still hasn't given up. A lot of you know people are already down about this year, but it's kind of like we talked about. We were very honest with the reality of this team. Yeah, coming off that pick game, they weren't they weren't really good. And you know, a lot of it was more due to the victim, they were victims of a circumstance, but it catches up with you. It's been a lot better now with a cook. Now we're done with Drexel. Kerr comes back. We get a whole week to kind of rest up, prepare, see what Kerr looks like in the lineup. There's a lot of different adjustments that can be made. We talked about it. The Kerr is kind of like that John Stockton figure coming from Arizona who won the Pac-12 last year. The ability to, to dish out the ball, uh, to give people looks uh, that, that maybe uh, your standard point guard wouldn't be able to do, even though we're, of course, Seth and Kobe have done a great job, but when you have to play 40 minutes for both of those guys each game, you tend to wear down and things happen. So I think, Ryan, you know, we talked about we kind of just needed that one spark. We needed that one break. And, yeah, we were hoping it would come with the pit game. But, hey, better late than never. And this can really be that domino effect to propel the Mountaineers forward. Completely agree. And you, kudos to uh, Kobe, man. I mean, Kobe in nine games starting at the point guard – uh, 30 assists, 15 turnovers. So a two to one ratio on Saturday, he was big time. I think he finished what with six assists, one turnover. So a 61 ratio. He, he really held down the fort and I'm really looking forward to seeing how him and Kerr play off one another. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's going to be nice to have two ball handlers. Teams just can't press us for 40 minutes and wear us out anymore. So it'll be nice to have him back. And it was good to see Seth back too. Seth went three for six from downtown, made some big time threes. He had been struggling. We mentioned 0 for 11 from three the other night. Um, much needed lift off the bench. I think with Kerr back and, and Kobe in the backcourt, when Seth comes off the bench, he's going to get more and more looks because he's just another guy that's a threat on the offensive side. And we've seen it with Kerr, man. Kerr, Kerr's as good as anybody at setting his teammates up to succeed. So he pitches the ball at the floor well. Um, he's good off ball screens, good at finding the, the shooters if you help off on the roll guy with Jesse. This thing with Kerr is going to look so much better, so much more fluid offensively. Spacing will be better. 
And I'll mention a guy that's struggling right now, Josiah Harris. He's going to be a lot better with Kerr back in the lineup as well. Yeah, we're definitely spread some minutes out more, relieves pressure there. And I think the, part of this too, Ryan, is you just brought up Seth coming off the bench. And we saw that last year. You know, I, that Texas Tech game, when I think of Seth, that always comes to my mind is we really, especially on the road, needed needed that win. And and he he stepped up in that game like that. And I think him coming off the bench does give you that spark. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think sometimes too is, of course, when you're out there, you want to be a starter. You want to get the most minutes. You want to be the best player you can be. But sometimes you're better. And what's better for the team is being that, okay, we get some energy off the bench. I think Seth's like that, like you said. I think Ofri's probably like that as well. And the thing about with Ofri is, is this guy's young. And, you know, he he's made some mistakes out there. and But he's a lot uh, way further ahead where we thought he was going to be when kind of this started or when we got Ofri. Like his goal was kind of, to develop him this year, right? Kind of sim similar but different than what they're doing with Noah. Obviously, they know Noah wasn't going to play this year, um, and this was going to be a development year for him. But with Ofri, it was like kind of the – I think they saw more of kind of how Bembry had to be this year. With, oh, we'll try to get him in for a couple minutes a game. We need to put some weight on him. We need to develop him. But, you know, with, you know, a cook and, and of course, um, Kerr, you know, you got some some solid guards that can come out there when you need a couple buckets stored to give you a flash and and really do some great things. And I think I'm sure Coach Eilert, Josh, is is breathing a breath of fresh air, knowing that he has more to work with. Because now, I mean, we'll talk about it, Ryan. Kind of what the starting look what lineup looks like is obviously Kerr will, Kerr will start at the one, then you'll have Kobe at the two, probably Josiah right at the three, and then where we are right now, I'm going to guess Quinn and, and Jesse with a cook coming off while he's still building up um, his stamina and his reps. But I'll tell you what, in that kind of between Quinn, Jesse, and a cook, you brought this up before. That's a good two guys to, to, to play, excuse me, three guys to play two spots there. You could get a lot of great combinations there, especially you want to go small, you want to go bigger. Josh finally has some guys that he can work with, Ryan. Yeah, no doubt. And, and I, I think that's going to be the way the rotation is going to be is you got three guys for two positions at the four and five. You got Jesse, Quinn and we bring a cook off as we ramp him up probably play Jesse around 30 minutes he doesn't need to be playing 36 40 minutes he's a five man five men are not supposed to play 40 minutes unless they're taking plays off on the defense fan he needs to be protecting the rim more and more and now he can take some more chances at some of those blocks so Quinn I think will also play 30 minutes and I think a cook will be 20 so between those 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 three guys you can play a cook at the backup five for Jesse, when he's getting his breather, you could play a cook with Jesse at the four and five. And I think you could also slide Quinn down to the three at times as well. But mm -hmm. I think primarily definitely we'll uh, stick with those three guys in the in the five man rotation at the three position. You got Ofri and uh, Josiah now. So I think Josiah will start. He's more experienced. He looks the part more. Obviously, he's struggling making shots. But like I said, with Kerr back, I think he's going to start making some shots. He puts the time in. Things are going to start going his way, just like they did for Seth on Saturday. Um, and, and shout out to Ofri, man. I, I I know that he struggled shooting the basketball the last couple of games, but guys, he's a freshman. He's not. He's not even supposed to be playing. I, I I don't think any of us forecasted that he would be playing 26, 30 minutes a game uh, wow. that he's been asked to do. And he he's done a great job. And it's going to be so so crucial for him going forward with his development that he got these meaningful games and big time atmospheres, the, the backyard brawl game, the St. John's game. So, and then obviously in the backcourt, you got Kobe uh, and Kerr now together, and then you got Seth coming off. So, and, and you also have Pat Sumnick who, who uh, showed a couple flashes. So if we get in foul trouble in a pinch, we can throw Pat in there as well. Now we got to get Raekwon <laughs> and then, and then we're really in business with some depth and, and yeah. So, I mean, if, if you potentially, I know we still have some things to sort out with the legal system and all that, and I, I don't even know what the next steps are. Um, but if you got Kerr, Raekwon, and Seth and Kobe, all of a sudden your backcourt is pretty darn good right now. Huh. You Basically got some a brand new depth. team. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's you also a brand new team that. because you have – three players that you, you have more than half the people that can be out there. So yeah, you got a brand new team there. Uh, we got some, the chat is up and going as usual. It's good to be back live this week. I know we pre-recorded last week, but of course, thank you for all the support, everyone. Uh, Kenny, how's it going? Thank you for, for being there. Uh, of course, of course, J Mark, I was pointing right at you. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> always happy when you're able to hop on, uh, 
Jay Mark. And if you ever get a chance, everyone go check out old fashioned football, uh, an excellent podcast that Jay Mark and his wife do together, drink whiskey and talk some football. Um, yep. A cook, a cook is, uh, building up stamina. Yep. Get him out there, but looking forward to him, uh, putting on some more minutes and then see, I think it's Colin, if I remember correctly, uh, different subject, but Drake may is, uh, for UNC obviously is he's foregoing the bowl. So there we go. And I think that's why West Virginia is favored three and a half points in that game. And, uh, we'll pro unless some crazy new, crazy news breaks tomorrow. Hint, hint, hopefully maybe battle or something. Hopefully going it on. does. Yeah. Hopefully it does. Hopefully we're podcasting tomorrow. That means good things are happening. Uh, our, our plan is to do a show Wednesday, um, transfer portal stuff's going on right now. You know, nothing, nothing too big. Uh, so far there, but we're, you know, we'll catch everyone up on what's going on. Then obviously we play UMass at the end of this week. Uh, and then who else is here? John's always in here uh, at full strength. They, uh, a cook will be a game changer with perimeter play and blocking shots by the goal. Absolutely. So, and hey, Rush, let me, yeah. add, let me add on to John's comment. Cause that's a really good one too. And we talked about how he can, you could switch stuff. He can guard guards. He can protect the rim in 12 minutes. The other night, a cook was plus 15. It was when he was, that's when he was in the shot. game, we were plus 15 in 12 minutes. So, the guy, you don't have to run a play for him, and he and he's going to find a way to impact winning. So, I, I wish we had been able to have him from the beginning, but better late than never. And he's going to get better and better. And honestly, just glad to see him out there too with the stuff that he went through in that exhibition game, the mm -hmm. scare and persevering on the other side. You could hear it in Quinn's presser. Um, I mean, just to see him fight and, and yeah. get back into this lineup and play the sport that he loves. So, guys, that. Uh, there's there is light at the end of the tunnel right now there we go there, there's a little bit of hope and a lot of basketball to be played so big 12 play starts uh west virginia's on the road against houston i think that's january 6 ryan so before what then draw yeah there we go <laughs> start off strong hey we finally get some guys back maybe some the legal system will, will help us out and you never know what that game could look like um you know just less than a month from now but till then we still got four games to play this Saturday. UMass, the Hall of Fame Classic. Your old employer, Frank Martin, uh, will be up there in Springfield. Then, obviously, Darius Nichols uh, with Radford, uh, then Toledo, and then, of course, Ohio State. That game will be uh, 7 o'clock on Fox. Uh, what was that? A couple of days before New Year, 1230. So, oh, I, I just realized, too, we play, we play Toledo just before our bowl game, too. So, we'll get a little double action on – what's that? Is that the 20 – Nope, I read the it's dates wrong, everyone. Third. Ignore yeah. me. I, I'm still in Christmas. I don't know. Who knows what dates anymore? We just know that the holidays are going on. But with those four games, Ryan, what are you looking forward to now that now that we've seen after the Drexel game kind of relieve some of our fears? We're getting Kerr back. Obviously, things could flip in terms of other news. But what still concerns you, too, with these four games coming up? Well, anytime you bring back somebody new, uh, it usually takes a game to mesh or a couple games. So figuring out how they want to play. I know Curse has been practicing this entire time, and it's going to make things easier. But just figuring out how they want to play defensively. Do they want to play more zone? Kerr, Kerr's not the best defender in the world. I, I, I think that's well documented. He's more of an offensive player than defensive player uh, compared to a Cook, who's more of a an elite defensive player in the country with his, his – uh, um, ability to block shots and go, be able to guard guard. So um, versatility, that's the right word. Um, so I, I think, I think just being able to mess these pieces, redo those rotations, how, how Josh wants to do his substitution patterns. I think it's going to take, take a little bit, but the sense of urgency is as high as ever. We've dug ourselves in a hole. We talked about the net rankings. We were 220. That had to be rock bottom. We skyrocketed already 30 spots with just one win. You get a good win over UMass, you're going to go up even more. Radford's good. They're going to have a chance to win their league. Everybody, it'll be nice to have Darius Nichols back in the Coliseum. Toledo's good. They're, they got a chance to win the MAC, and obviously Ohio State's Ohio State. So, yeah, we got it. We got a heck of an opportunity before we play Houston in the Big 12 opener. Um, it would be nice to, at minimal, get three out of four of these, if not all four. I, I think I think it's doable with our team back, and I think we're going to start playing with some more confidence and, and based off of what we learned from the first nine games and adding Kerr back into the mix. And it's something we talked about, and, I mean, you never know what the NCAA is up to or any of these committees, but someone with common sense would realize, hey, maybe these first nine games, eight games, even seven before – um, a cook came back. Hey, you know, this, 
This was an and eight, really a six yeah. person team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously we get a cook back. And then, and then obviously curse. So you'd hope those committees would, you know, we start getting on a roll here, things looking well, maybe we turn around a couple games that we shouldn't have won to even things out. You know, January, February is looking like a different story. You'd hope that any committee would be smart enough to be like, oh, well, that wasn't their real team. They had <laughs> really six yeah. players um, going at one time. So, but Hey, you got, it starts obviously here. You got four non-conference games left and then you play in the best league in college basketball. So I mean, and what was going to be a matchup we were looking forward to, obviously, before everything went down with two Hall of Famers. Josh, all of a sudden, I mean, Josh is playing some pretty great coaches to, to start his coaching career, obviously, with uh, <laughs> Rick Patino, And then and then now um, the – the why can't I think of his name? The UVA coach. Um, Tony, Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Yeah. I wanted to say Tony Elliott, but I'm like, no, that's not right. Tony Bennett. Yeah. And then, obviously, Frank Martin uh, against UMass there. So – Hey, I mean, seeing those going against those coaches and those coaching styles, definitely. I'm sure Josh is learning a thing or two. And then, hey, you know, getting this one against, you know, Frank Martin, that's that's kind of that next domino, Ryan. And that's a huge step and can really, really just c continue to catapult this team forward. Because I think with these four games left, it seems like each one kind of gets progressively a little harder and just right in time to to get to Houston. So. This is a good spot. Like you said, you called it best. This is a great opportunity for this basketball team now that there is more stability in the locker room. Yeah, and you, I mean, UMass is playing good ball too, everybody. They're five and two, and th this game will be special for Josh. Obviously, I worked with Frank. I went to Final Four with Frank, so this would be the one time maybe ever that I right. root against a Frank Martin team. This it, it, it'll it'll definitely be hard uh, cheering against my guy, but obviously I, I'm a Mountaineer. Josh is my guy as well. Um, but, I mean, they're good. Josh worked with Frank Martin at Kansas State on Hugs' initial staff. So it's going to be an emotional game for Josh, too. I mean, he looked up to Frank. Frank was always yeah. good to him, uh, always looked out for him um, in his initial year as a GA and offered him kind of as a big brother mentor to him. So it'll definitely be unique, kind of like Frank talked about when he coached against Hugs. It was, it was different. It's always different when you're coaching against family. So – it's going to be fun Saturday. Looking forward to watching our guys go off against uh, Frank and them guys up there. They, they're doing a good job in, in the Atlantic 10. It's going to be a good challenge for the Mountaineers. It's going to be fun. It, it, it'll be a good one. Uh, I totally forgot about I'm like, oh, yeah, wait, Josh, and you started talking about it. I'm like, wait, they intersected. Kansas State. Yeah. That's right. That's it, where, that's all, it where it all went down. Yeah. Hey, the little apple, right? It's it's still exciting. A lot of, a lot of things going on there. Uh, anyway, this concludes another episode of the Ryan and Rush Show. Great to be back. Great. Another great victory Monday in the books. Unless something crazy breaks tomorrow, we'll be back Wednesday, discuss a little football transfer portal, and then we'll preview the UMass game, the Hall of Fame game, on Thursday for you all. So, hey, happy holidays, everyone. Um, do something charitable. Do something to give back. We're all so blessed, and we're just so fortunate here. So, again, love you all. Thank you for the support, and let's go Mountaineers. Let's go Mountaineers. See you guys.